So hi everyone. Thank you all for joining us for to to watch this video about myself and the other Armenian Studies Manukyan postdoctoral fellow this year. My name is Anush Tamar Suni. I am currently one of the two Manukyan postdoctoral fellows at the University of Michigan. I am associated with the Armenian Studies program as well as with the Department of Anthropology here at the University of Michigan. It's been a distinct pleasure and an honor to be one of the Manugyan postdoctoral fellows this year. I've really enjoyed my time here. Before I came here to Michigan, I was I, I completed my PhD in the Department of Anthropology at the University of California in Los Angeles. I completed my PhD uh, this last summer, 2019. Before that, I completed my master's in Turkish studies at Sabanja University in Istanbul, Turkey. And before that, my bachelor's degree in Middle East studies at Pomona College in Claremont, California. It's great to be here with everyone watching. And now I'll turn it over to my co-host, Kaden. Hello. Hi, Anush. Hi, everyone. It's really nice seeing you, Anush, and uh, communicating with the community. My name is Karin Jalatian. I am one of the, as Anush mentioned, postdocs for this year at the Manugian, the Manugian Postdoc uh, Fellowship. And um, I just a, a little bit of a background. I completed my PhD in comparative literature at UC Irvine last year. My research and my dissertation is on <coughs> post-World War II diaspora Armenian literature and film. This year in Ann Arbor at the University of Michigan has been extremely uh, productive, generative, exciting, and I'm, I look forward to sharing with Anush our experiences here for this video. And uh, I guess I can start by, uh, by asking Anush a question. So would you tell us a little bit about your, the lecture that we are supposed to give, that we're asked to give as a Manugian postdoctoral fellow? Yes, thank you, Karen, for that question. Yeah, so we started our postdocs uh, September 1st, and I had the distinct pleasure to give um, a, a talk quite early in the year. It was a very exciting way to start off the year. I gave my public uh, lecture on October 9th, and the title of the lecture was Palimpsest of Ruins Between Armenian and Kurdish Histories in Anatolia. And this lecture, was um, it was drawn from my dissertation research and it was actually drawn from the conclusion of my dissertation and it was about the repeating cycles of violence in Van, which is the area where I did my research, against Kurdish and Armenian communities. And so I looked at two different houses, specific uh, houses of two different families, one of an Armenian family in the village of Lesk, now called Kalajik, um, in 1915, which was built in 1900 and then destroyed in 1915 during the Armenian Genocide, and then another house of a Kurdish family in the city of Yuksekova or Gever, which was built by a family there in the last decade and was destroyed uh, by state forces, uh, Turkish state forces in the 2015-2016 war. And so I looked at these repeating cycles of violence, state violence against minority communities, Armenian and Kurdish, over the last century by focusing on two family homes. And how about you, Karen? How was, uh, what was your talk about and how did that go? Thank you, thank you. Uh, my, my talk was, I imagine like yours, was the highlight of my experience here because finally we had basically an hour, more than an hour to actually share our research, the, ones that we, the one that we had done for, for many years before. And so it was, it was uh, a really remarkable experience for me my lecture was on the diaspora Armenian poet by Oshagan, and the lecture, that, the title of the lecture was "Overwhelming Absurdity: The by Oshagan's Discourse of Diaspora, Diasporic Discourse." And uh, and I also drew it from my dissertation's third chapter, I think, if I recall it. And uh, and basically, I went through the major phases in in by Oshagan's way of writing and thinking about diaspora. And I try to connect it, situate it within the context of post-war French existentialist um, uh, philosophy, uh, as well as to argue that Vajoshagan makes something different out of this existentialist experience 
and really uses it to think about the Ar Armenian experience of dispersion. And in addition to that, I had the distinct honor of actually inviting a filmmaker who had recently made a documentary, experimental documentary on Baha'i uh, So there was a screening of Harai on Mahoney's uh, Between Acts, Baha'i Shagan Between Acts, the film. And I'm very grateful that, first of all, the Armenian community showed up. They, they very much attended both meetings. And also the Armenian Studies Program actually supported the idea of inviting this filmmaker and having him present a film, but also talk about the film before my lecture. So yeah. Um, we also, in addition to these lectures on it, we also had the chance to uh, present in various platforms, I think, right? In University of Michigan, even beyond. Would you mind sharing? Would you like to maybe share some of these experiences with us? Yes, definitely. Like you said, Karen, it was such a, a delight to be able to present our, our, our long public lectures to the community and to get feedback, but we also had the opportunities to present in a number of different um, forums. And so for myself, uh, it all started off actually even before my public lecture, there was a conference at the University of Michigan through the Armenian Studies Program on generations and legacies. Um, and we, a, a number of us gave short uh, sort of lightning talks where we all got to hear uh, little bits about each other's research, which was a lot of fun because, you know, you and I, we were new to the program and we heard from a lot of the former po uh, postdocs and faculty about the Armenian Studies program, as well as from all of the current grad students. And so it was a sort of a, a quick way to, for everyone to acquaint with each other. And it was very well attended by the University of Michigan community and the Armenian um, community in general. And so in, in that conference, I presented a little bit about my research with a short talk called Layers of Ruins and Memory in Vaughan. And then um, I was, I had the opportunity to present at a few of my professional association meetings this year, both the Army, the Middle East Studies Association, which was in, the, the conference was in New Orleans this year. And I talked about oral history and landscape as alternative archives of Ottoman Armenian life on a panel that was organized by the Society of Armenian Studies, and which actually included a number of former um, Michigan Armenian Studies postdocs and graduate students. So it was definitely sort of a, a Michigan-themed panel um, with Murat Jankara and Zovinar Derderian. And then as well, I also presented at the American Anthropological Association meeting, which was in Vancouver, on the politics of nostalgia among the ruins in Turkey. And then finally, I presented my research at the Max Planck Institute for the Study of Religious and Ethnic Diversity in Göttingen, Germany in January. And that was a, a paper called Buried Gold, Buried Histories, Myth, Magic, and Materiality, which was also drawn from a chapter of my dissertation about treasure hunting. So it's been, it's been a lot of fun presenting both at Michigan and in other contexts. I've learned a lot this year and gotten a lot of good feedback. And, and how about you, Karen? What was your experience of, of sharing your work this year? Great. Uh, unlike you, I think uh, I'm, I'm a little bit jealous of you because you travel so much. I decided to stay in Ann Arbor for the year, and most of my presentations were in Ann Arbor. Uh, the one that, uh, there are a couple that really uh, are memorable to me. The one that stands out most for me is the one that I did for MWAS, the multidisciplinary workshop for, of Armenian studies. And, um, and there I presented uh, the second chapter of my dissertation on a film uh, by this Canadian-Armenian diaspora Armenian filmmaker, Arne Torosian. The film is her first feature film in its title, Stone Time Touch. And, uh, and I, as you know, it's the, the presentation is very casual, the papers are pre-circulated, and, uh, and one has about 45 minutes to just talk, but also about, uh, for, uh, for an hour to actually receive feedback. And I really enjoyed it a lot. And I felt like I got a lot of encouragement and a lot of valuable feedback from the, from the community. Uh, there were a couple of similar um, uh, presentations that I did. One with the poetics, interdisciplinary poetics workshop organized by Rackham. Uh, but then the, the other one that was most memorable to me, in addition to actually the future flashes that you mentioned, the five-minute short talks that we did 
which like you say, I completely agree, it was a great introduction to the scholarly and the community at large actually. Uh, but the one that I did towards the end before everything kind of like stopped and we went into isolation was the, was the one organized by the International Institute and, uh, and there I presented to a non-Armenian audience, it was, a, it was a conference on migration, and I presented on three Armenian poets, the Asper Armenian poets, Bayev Shargan, Igor Beledian, and uh, uh, Sarafian, Igor Sarafian. And I feel like I didn't, I didn't, I feel like I reached out in a good way to the community who didn't know much about Armenians, and I was able to say something about the diaspora experience of these dispersed people. Um, but overall, I want to say that there have been many opportunities at the University of Michigan to present, and the scholarly community, both within the Armenian Studies program, but also at large, has been extremely vibrant and, uh, and welcoming to, to talk and to present and to share ideas. So it's been a good, it's been a good experience. Um, but in addition to this, uh, to these presentations on which we also organized our own conference. Uh, which was which was incredible. Would you like to maybe say a couple of things about it first? <clears throat> sure. Yeah, we had an incredible opportunity uh, given by the Armenian Studies Program to organize our own conference. It was the first time that I've you know I've I've helped organizing other conferences when I was a grad student, but this was the first time when we totally had the reins and we were just basically given a blank slate and the freedom to do whatever we wanted. It was incredible. And so uh, Karen and I, you know, you and I, we started way back in June, I guess, when we, when we first met in Los Angeles, brainstorming, talking about your research and my research and looking for all the different connections and how, how our, our very different yet overlapping research interests speak to each other. Mine uh, being sort of contemporary, Ethnographic and historical anthropology about uh, violence in in the in the region of Anatolia, and yours being about literature in the diaspora, and seeing how these spoke together. And so, in the end, we came up with a workshop. It was two days, uh, with the help of our faculty advisor, Dr. Hakem Al Rustom, as well as uh, the director of the Armenian Studies Program, Melanie Tanyelian, as well as the program coordinator, uh, Naira. We all together worked very uh, hard on this this workshop and it came together beautifully in um, a workshop that was called Afterlives of Catastrophe, Western Armenia in Comparative Perspective that we held over two days, February 13th and 14th. And maybe I'll, I'll turn it over to you to see, to uh, you can tell everyone a little bit more. Yeah, indeed. And uh, it, uh, the workshop really was um, a long project for us, like you said. And there were a lot of things that we worked on in meticulous detail with, with, with uh, Professor, Professor Al Rostam and Melanie Tanielian, the director of the program. And I guess one of the things that I can add is that uh, we were able to actually invite some of the more cutting edge uh, scholars in our respective disciplines. Um, I invited David Marriott from UC Santa Cruz, but he's in uh, Pennsylvania State University right now. Um, uh, you, maybe Anush, you can say a couple of things about the, the person that, that you invited, but I just want to ask, so just, just add quickly that there was also David Kazanchian, who came from University, University of Pennsylvania with, uh, with, a couple of, with a graduate student, Diana, and uh, we also involved uh, the graduate students from University of Michigan. Um, and uh, it was an intense two days of discussions and, uh, and sharing, intense, but also very honest and very generative. And so, yeah, that's what I would add. Yes, uh, maybe absolutely. you can say a couple of things about the mm -hmm. uh, about the uh, other keynote speaker that we invited. Right. Yeah. So we were lucky to be able to invite two keynote speakers, as you mentioned, Karen. Um, David Marriott was one, and the other uh, who we invited was Aisha Parla, who is um, a professor at Boston University in the Department of Anthropology, and the two of them gave keynote, speech to, keynote speeches together, and then David Kazanjan moderated a discussion between the two of them on the first evening. And then on the second day, we had 
two panels which were sort of mirroring each other and both speaking to the two sides of the, our research. The first being um, called Remnants, in which I presented, as well as uh, a graduate student from the Anthropology Department at Michigan, Ozge Korkmaz, as well as a graduate student from University of Pennsylvania, as you mentioned, Diana Kashoyan Schultz. And then we had uh, Helmut Puff, who is a professor from the Department of History, as a discussant. And then in the second panel called Diaspora, Karen, uh, you presented, as well as Ara Kelminasian, who is a graduate student um, in Slavic language and languages and literatures here at Michigan, and uh, Marlon Salas, who is a postdoc in the comparative literature department, was the discussant. And then finally, to round everything off, we had a very lively discussion, like you mentioned, Karen, uh, which was led by David Kazanjan and Aisha Parla. And it was really a wonderful opportunity to get everyone together and share ideas. Yeah. So um, maybe I'll, I'll jump off with the next question. Yeah, oh, sorry, did you want to add something? I just wanted to add that it's sad that we weren't able to continue this conversation that we started uh, in person, of course, with the University of Pennsylvania, because the idea was to meet with them, to actually go to the University of Pennsylvania and to carry on the conversation. But we did have the virtual meeting that David Kazanjan and Diana Pachon Schultz and uh, Veronica Zablonski, they uh, persisted and they actually organized a virtual meeting, which was, a, uh, which was better than nothing, given the circumstances that we're in. Yes. Yes, absolutely. The original idea, like you mentioned, was to have our workshop be the first in, in two parts and the second be a much a larger conference organized at, at the University of Pennsylvania. But hopefully we'll be able to continue with that plan eventually once, once things sort of stabilize. Um, next question, I want to ask you about your experience of teaching a course at the U of M this, uh, this semester, winter semester. Yeah, thank you. Teaching was uh, was great overall, I think. Um, the ending was crazy because the semester kind of uh, abruptly had to be transferred online, etc. But the beginning uh, and also the planning towards the teaching was very rewarding. So I taught a course that is, that's titled Stories of Multicultural Identity. And uh, the core of the course is basically taking four novels uh, by Peter Najarian, Voyages, Toni Morrison, Beloved, um, Winona Laduke, Last Standing Woman, and uh, Eugene, uh, Eugenides, Jeffrey Eugenides, Middlesex. Uh, all of these are by multicultural authors and they all address multicultural identity, but also from different lenses, from, from, from the perspective of gender and sexuality, uh, from specific communal perspectives like African American or Greek American or Armenian American. Uh, and in addition to that, we had two films to watch for the class and include and also two museum visits to the University of Michigan and Museum of Art. Um, so through all of these activities, which I was able to organize and refine by discussing them with my uh, advisors from the comparative literature, uh, I was I think I had a very rewarding set of discussions with my students, as far as I could tell from, from interactions with my students. And I feel like I was able to, uh, to raise some issues about what it means to have multicultural identity and uh, to think about this in a nuanced way as opposed to fall into one extreme of assimilation or the other extreme of sort of like ghettoizing and isolation. So that was my experience. Uh, what about you, Anush? How, what did you make of the class that you were teaching this semester? This semester, yes. Yeah, it's great to hear about your experience with your course more. Um, so this, this semester, I taught a seminar in the anthropology department here at U of M, and it was called Violence, Ruins, and the Politics of the Past. It was an upper division seminar, and I had 15 students, juniors and seniors, and they were really a great bunch. They were very lively, and I was you know, not sure how many students I would get with that topic because it's, it's a pretty niche topic. And on the first day of the class, I went around and asked everyone why they were there. A lot of them were there because it fulfilled a requirement, which is understandable. And some of them, I was surprised. They saw you. So they said, you know, I saw ruins in the title, and I've never taken a class on ruins, so I thought I would sign up. And others said, I'm really interested in violence. I thought, hmm, I wonder, wonder where we're going with this. But it was, it was really wonderful. We talked about, you know, histories of state violence against minorities, inter-ethnic violence, 
I, uh, and politics of the past, meaning the politics of memory and history, how history is politicized and how certain narratives are silenced and other narratives are canonized. And then ruins, we, we looked at these two things, histories of violence and politics of history, through the material landscape, buildings, architecture, and how certain spaces and places are erased or some are restored or some are valorized and what is a ruin. And so we looked at various topics. We looked at hauntings, ghost stories, new critical anthropological works on ruins. And I, I the, the students were very engaged. I, I enjoyed all of our, our classes when we were meeting in person. And then, as you mentioned, partway through the semester, we suddenly had to go online. And so that was also a crash course in remote learning. We all you know, learned a lot and managed somehow to to uh, to make that transition. And it's still every week. It's sort of a an, a an exercise in improvisation. Does this work? Does this not work? Is this working with the students? So it's interesting trying to continue to connect with them. I do miss them. I wish I could you know see them all again before the semester is over in person. But I'm doing my best to to keep everyone engaged to, through the end. Yeah. So. Let me see. I think we may be we may be getting towards the end of our time, so maybe I'll ask one more question and then we can have re, um, concluding remarks. So uh, yeah, maybe you could just say something about your um, your participation either in your department or with the community or or perhaps your 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 talk at the Armenian Church in Southfield. Yes. Thank you, Anush. It's really exciting to hear your experience with your class too. Uh, but for me, um, as if the year was not rich and exciting enough, there were other things going on. And the, the one of the things that was memorable was that we, again, with the encouragement of the Armenian Studies program, but also just their support, we actually went uh, to the Southfield Armenian Church and gave a very brief presentation. Uh, without going into too much detail about, the, about this experience, I want to say that it was very rewarding. And also an eye-opening experience, given the interest and the excitement that I received from them. Uh, so I gave a very brief presentation on Bioshargan. Oh, I gave a presentation on my dissertation, which included, included Bioshargan, Pikor Boulodian, two poets, and the filmmaker that I mentioned, Garnet Torosian. And the community, uh, uh, you know, a lot of them are senior citizens. Uh, you would think a lot of them are not that interested in these kinds of activities. A lot of them were there, they, they were engaged and they were asking me lots of questions and they wanted to actually meet for me to return. So that was really nice. Uh, the other thing to go a little bit faster uh, that we both did was to participate in our respective de departmental uh, meetings basically and, and the, the everyday life of the department. So I really enjoyed being part of that community of the community of the comparative literature department. Uh, job talks were both an educating, a formative educational experience for me, just to understand how the decision making within the department works. But also, it was a great opportunity to just make friends and understand and learn about colleagues. Um, so this is this were these were the two experiences that maybe you also want to say a couple of things, Anush, about. Yeah, definitely the. The public talks in the community that we gave at the the Armenian Church, St. John's Armenian Church in Southfield, was really a wonderful experience. I also, um, I grew up in this community, so it's sort of a, it was an interesting homecoming for me to come back to do a postdoc here since I never actually studied here. I, you know, left after high school and did all of my, my schooling elsewhere in California, mostly, and in Turkey. Um, and so coming back here to do a postdoc at the U of M was a, a dream come true. And going to the Southfield Armenian Church to give a, a, a academic talk to the community that knew me since I was a small child was very interesting. At first, I was a little worried. I thought, what are they going to think? Are they going to like my research? Are they not going to like it? And I started, I, I threw in a little photo of me as a six-year-old dressed up to go to the high hop, the Armenian dance. Uh, way back when. So just in case they didn't realize that I was the same person, they could make the connection. But I was very impressed. And, and uh, of course, I was also a little bit nervous because my research is, you know, it's critical. I'm talking about some kinds of histories that sometimes people don't want to hear about. And yet, and throughout the talk, I was, you know, watching the audience with serious faces. And I thought, is this good serious or not good serious? But when it was over, I was 
you know, sort of mobbed by at least 10 or 15 of the audience members who wanted to ask follow up questions, wanted to give me their email addresses. And even some of them, one of them ran to the church bookstore and bought two copies of a book uh, of two different books to give me and said, you know, this is relates to your research. You should read these. And so it was really an incredible experience. I would love to do it again. And, and I followed up with some of those people from the church who I've met. So that was wonderful. And then also the um, being part of the anthropology department here at the University of Michigan was also a really a wonderful experience. I got to know a number of colleagues who have become friends and mentors and and um, I've shared lots of ideas and, lo and learned a lot from them. And so I'm sure that those those relationships will continue even when we're not no longer here at the University of Michigan. Would you like to make any uh, concluding remarks, Karen? Uh, sure, I think uh, we covered a lot. We could maybe talk more, but this is great already. Uh, overall, I'm very grateful for the experience. Uh, first of all, like uh, I'm grateful that we had the chance to work together, Anush, but also that the fact that we made these connections with the Armenian Studies Program and colleagues from anthropology, comparative literature, history, uh, English department, and a bunch of other uh, communities. So overall, it has been great, and uh, I, I really, uh, I'm excited for the new postdocs that are going to start, uh, hopefully in, in a normal fashion, uh, starting from September. And uh, and yeah, it, it feels and like we when we interacted with the other postdocs, the Manugam postdoctoral fellows, it felt like we we're part of this special club, and I want to sort of like uh, preserve and sustain that spirit. Yes, absolutely. I would like to second that. It's been really a pleasure to be here and, and an incredible opportunity to be able to get to know all of the wonderful scholars and students in the Armenian Studies program. And it's been just such a nourishing and, and nurturing experience. I found, you know, wonderful mentors, wonderful colleagues here, such a generosity of spirit and a generosity in terms of, of academic sharing that everyone is very engaged with each other. They all want to learn about each other's work, and it's such a place, it's, it's, it's an incredible place where you can come and be vulnerable with your own academic work and learn so much from, from your colleagues. So it's been, it's been such a wonderful opportunity and a pleasure to be here, and, and I look forward to continuing to be part of the Armenian Studies program and community in the future and to continuing to learn from, from all of our colleagues. Exactly. Excellent. <laughs> well, thank you everybody for watching. Stay tuned with the Armenian Studies program and hopefully we'll see you all soon once social distancing is over. <laughs>